Thank you everyone today for joining us on another episode of the Practical Broker Podcast. Today, I'm really excited to have Dean Blanchard with us and he's a very unique guest. Um, he's a specialist tax lawyer that we ended up talking about something that's near and dear to my heart, which is property acquisitions and property flipping. And in Canada, something that is um, could potentially be disastrous if you don't plan correctly with the capital gains tax. And, uh, and we all think it's, you know, we don't pay the capital gain tax when we're selling our own home. And for the most part, that's probably true. Dean's gonna get into it and explain when those might be differences. Um, so Dean's a specialist lawyer, as I mentioned, and he's opened up his own firm called Blanchford Tax Law um, to specifically help clients dealing with the CRA issue and a lot around these kind of capital gains and real estate related matters, which is really unusual to have such a specialist. So I'm really honored to have him here and a guest um, on the show. Um, Dean, tell me something. I was neat when we talked the other day, you told me about your, how you got into tax law. I thought that was an amazing story. If you want to share a little bit about you and, and how you got into this field. Sure. Yeah. Chad, thanks so much for having me here. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, uh, as you mentioned, I, I, so I practice exclusively in tax dispute resolution. So not on, only am I niche as a tax lawyer, but I'm also niche in that I'm just dealing with disputes. So situations where CRA says, that somebody owes a lot of money and, and that person says that that they don't. Um, I got into it because when I was in law school, I, I it was it was one of the classes that just made sense to me. I was also interested in charity law and uh, and surprisingly charity uh, charity is is all about tax because um, the CRA kind of polices. There's no charity police. There's just uh, the CRA to make sure that charities are behaving well. And if they're not, they lose their uh, their ability to give tax receipts, which is what it's all about for charities. Right. Um, as far as surviving and, and obviously their missions. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I got into it that way. And then I ended up a judge one day came into one of our tax classes and started promoting uh, this clerkship program where you go to the tax court, which is here in Ottawa, and you work for the judges for a year. So I applied for that and I, I got it. And so that's the story of both how I became a, a tax litigation lawyer, because I loved working at the court and ended up going into private practice in tax litigation. Right. And it's also the story of how I came here to Ottawa, because that, that was what brought me and my, uh, my partner here. That's amazing. It, it's so neat, right? In life, sometimes I know I have four kids and um, my oldest is just going to university now and getting some internships and those things. And it's amazing how sometimes those little events have such an impact on your life. Yeah, no, it's it's incredible. And, and we've loved it. We've been here for uh, we've been here for eight years now. We have our daughter here. We have a house in Alta Vista. We did a renovation on this house. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's we're set up roots and, and we're very pleased. Oh, that's great. Well, hey, happy to have you and happy to have such a talented person here in Ottawa helping our uh, our real estate investors um, stay out of hot water with CRA. That's right. So let's jump into it. Tell us about, um, you know, what is, let's start really basic, because sometimes some people don't, you know, they're in this, in this process, they don't even know what capital gains is, or the tech, you know, the home exemption. Um, so let's start really high level. Yeah. Okay, let, let's, yeah, let, let's, Let's start by talking about what like house flipping is. And I think this this episode is going to be helpful to your listeners, two, two kind of types of listeners. First off, there's the property flippers who are doing this as a business, right? And you told me that you do know a lot of people who are doing that. They're 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 buying, they're 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 getting you know mortgages from you, and then they're they're flipping the property like you know a few a year. Right. So those people probably know that they're paying tax on on the, the profit that they make off that property. Um, they're paying, they're, they're reporting it and they're paying tax on that. Hmm. Um, I think it's this episode. So this episode is going to be helpful to them. I think it's also going to be especially helpful for people who might be thinking, um, Hey, I can go in, I can buy a property. I can do maybe do this work myself or hope there's some appreciation. I can renovate it or maybe the, the neighborhood appreciates, or maybe it's just a condo even, yeah. uh, you know, the real estate market is booming. Everybody's making money off it. I'm watching the yeah. TV shows. It looks, it looks fun. I saw Mike Holmes do it. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so they, they jump into it and, and that's great, but um, a lot of them will think, "Oh, well, when, well I, I'll I'll move into the property for a bit, I'll live in it, and then when I sell it, you know, in Canada we don't pay we don't pay tax on our principal residence, so I won't pay tax on it." And of course, uh, that's 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 wrong, and that's mm -hmm. that can be a situation um, where where people get in, in in big trouble, and and they have to come to me, and sometimes these assessments we're talking about chatter you know, two hundred, three hundred million dollar uh, wow. bills that CRA is 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 get, is handing out to people so it's it's a major deal 
Absolutely. Well, that's why I'm so thankful that you're on the show and we're putting this information out there. And you're right. I do deal with a lot of home flippers and people that are, like you said, they're trying to flip a home once every year, two years, three years, but you know, and I know you will get into intentions, um, but that's kind of partly what they do. They have their day job and this is what they do on the side. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, nothing like nothing. There's not, certainly nothing wrong with that. They're allowed to do that. The issue is just, um, is just that if you're what what the legislation says with regards to principal residence is if you're if you're buying a property with the intention of selling it then um when you do sell it you have to pay tax on on the profit right and and you you were using the word capital gains we got to be careful about that right because if right, you're right. selling if you're selling that property um if you bought the property to sell it, what, what the government will say, what CRA will say is, no, 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 that's not a capital property. That's that's a piece of inventory. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you're buying something to use it to earn income, like a rental property, for example, that's capital, right? The definition of capital is you're using it to earn income. Right. Um, but if you're buying that property to turn around and sell it one year, two years later, you know, three months later, whatever, if your intention at the time of purchasing it, it is to sell it, you're going to you're going to pay tax on that it's inventory that means it's not eligible for the principal residence exemption so you're paying tax on it like just like any other piece of business right. and uh and you're paying tax on the whole profit so you're not getting that 50 percent capital gains um that capital gains treatment that you would on a piece of capital so you're paying tax on the whole on the whole profit Wow, that's huge. So is that sort of just to, to boil it back down to something, and then there's the intention. So you're saying if you're intending to sell it, I mean, one could argue, right, you, you intend to, we all intend to sell everything at some point. Right. Um, so is there like a, a, a time or, a, you know, like a horizon, like when is, you know, eventually, I'm going to sell my house. You know, eventually you'll sell yours right where, where is that line yeah and if we're all smart we're all thinking about uh hopefully buying a property that is going to go up in value right we all exactly. have that expectation you know yeah. it's built into our financial plan um and so it can be very very frustrating for people to hear um that this kind of intention can get them into trouble so what what happens is, uh, first off, to answer your, your discrete question, no, there is no there's no time limit, right? And a lot of people, even real estate agents, when I when I present to real estate agents, they think, oh, but there's this one year cutoff. So if I live in there for you know three hundred and and sixty six days, then yeah. now I'm fine. I can I can sell it and I can keep that profit. That's that's not true. Right. Um, the the test, if if you will, is again, what was your intention at the time of purchase? Now a lot of like people think that, wait a minute, the CRA is going to tell me what my intention is. A judge is going to tell me what my intention is. It seems, it seems, uh, it, 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 it gets a visceral reaction out of people. Right. Um, but of course the government does this all the time, right? If you, if you go and take your wife out to dinner and you try and claim that deduct that, that expense, see, the CRA is going to want to know what your intention was from that dinner. Was it to earn income or not there's, yeah. there's all sorts of examples of the way the government does this Wait, was it on valentine's day we're probably not getting <laughs> yeah, deducted yeah, yeah they doubt you were talking about business yeah uh so uh so what the government does what cra does is, is again they look at your intention at the time of purchase now i should say in in canada in the burden of proof is on the taxpayer to prove their intention in all tax disputes the burden of proof is on the taxpayer that's that's hard for us to swallow we think of criminal law right innocent until proven guilty yeah Not in tax in tax the burden of proof is on us it's on my clients wow. so we have to be able to prove our intention at the time of purchase there's a number of there's a number of things that the government uh that that the cases and and these cases go to go to trial all the time there's you know, a, a guy in Ottawa who was in trial recently um, on an assessment because he had bought and sold five properties, and 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 over the course of many years, and CRA uh, eventually went after him from the for the profits on all of them. Um, so there's there's a few factors that they'll look at. There's after, actually I've 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 identified about fifteen, um, okay. but I'll go through kind of the top five here, and then it, if, yeah. your, if your clients want to know more, they can they can head to I'm my. Sorry. You actually have me on the edge of my seat. It's uh... okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a big deal. And you know what? I I feel like there's one part that we've that we've skipped here, which maybe would just be good to give an example of how 
how this all okay so so before we get to these now that i know there's this suspense built up i'll, I'll, yeah. I'll tease it out a little bit longer absolutely okay Who would have thought tax law could be so much fun <laughs> so uh so first off um let's take a person called nick so i'll use nick so nick for example buys a, a, a property for three hundred twenty-five thousand. um not a lot of those around here anymore but it, say he finds one so he buys a property for three hundred twenty-five thousand. He he later sells it for four hundred seventy-five thousand, right? Okay. So his profit, right? Again, you use the word capital gain. I'm going to use the word profit. Okay. His profit is one hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. If CRA deems that to be a property flip, yeah. then they will assess him tax on one hundred fifty thousand. Now you imagine that that sale happened in one year, so all that one hundred fifty thousand comes into Nick's income in one year. So if he right, had right. another job where he's making whatever 80,000, that 150,000 is now coming on top. He's earning 230,000 that year. So that 150,000 is being taxed at the highest brackets. Wow. So say, you know, whatever, there's different brackets and they're, they're all marginal, but say it's it's effective at at 48%. Now yeah. he's paying $72,000 on that on that $150,000 profit. Yeah. Now there's these other things that I call CRA's FU assessment, and and I call them by FU I mean follow up. So they kind of come they come after they've identified you as a flipper. So the first oh, really thing, my, my mind went somewhere else, but uh, <laughs> it feels it feels like that's what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, so um, first off, they if if that was a new property, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine it was a new property, a condo or something. It went up in value, and then and then he sold it. Yeah. Um, if if he, he received the new housing HST rebate on that, yeah. CRA will then go back and, and, and assess him for that. So to, to so reject him for the new housing rebate. So that's something people don't think about. Yeah. Also, maybe it's maybe that house was a fixer upper, and he, out of that hundred and fifty thousand dollar profit he earned, there was actually a bunch of money that went into fixing it up expenses. Sure. He's going to have to prove that he incurred those expenses. So he's going to have to have receipts, right? Yeah. Nope, but hopefully he didn't pay contractors under the table because he's not going to be able to deduct, deduct those. Right. A, a lot of people will say, well, I did the work. Um, will I, you know, will I be able to deduct my time? And of course, the answer is yes, but only if you reported the income that you apparently paid yourself to do the yeah. work. It's a wash, right? Right, right, right. So and nobody does that. So you yeah. won't be able to deduct that. And then the big one is gross negligence penalties. If CRA thinks that uh, you act, you you intentionally didn't report this, which sometimes they do go after flippers for this, um, they hit you with a gross negligence penalty, which is fifty percent of the tax. So of that seventy-two thousand dollars, there'd be another thirty-six thousand dollars that gets whacked on top of that, and then interest as well. So those are all the potential consequences that come out of a potential fl a, a, a flip. Um, and so it's it's pretty serious stuff. That is serious. Yeah. So you wanted to know the the top kind of five five factors uh, of what um, what yeah, kind of exactly what differentiates somebody that you know buying a house and then changes their mind makes a little bit of money and maybe even does it a few times versus you know the person that's intentionally going property to property to flip and it, it's a business right because they you know there, there is the business flippers and and that might be a whole other show that you and i do um getting into that yeah but uh you know how do how does CRA you know what can people do to protect themselves sure sure so the fa the factors that distinguish the factors that the court will look at yeah. when it comes to um the intention of the person again the judge is trying to put themselves in the mind of this person at the time they purchased the property okay. um and 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 as a as a result that's what the cra auditor will do as well yeah so the first factor is obviously length of ownership now you, you heard me say that um that there's no there's no hard line rule right mm -hmm. but obviously the longer that, that you own that property the less likely it is for cra to uh to come back and and assess you for a flip yeah. so you know, if you're living in the property for five years, for sure, CRA is not coming to you um, thinking that you flipped that property. I shouldn't say for sure, but very, very unlikely. Low, yeah, low <laughs> likelihood. That, that's a pretty long bet. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So five years, you know, it, it, nothing's for sure, but for very low chance. But as you get closer, if it if it if it is a year, if it's a little bit more than a year, and, and all these factors interplay, right? Right. But 
the the longer you stay in it, the better for sure, as, as far as establishing that it wasn't a flip. Yeah. Um, the next one also, as I said, interplays with the first one, history of ownership. So CRA can assess you as, as, as for business income on a flip on your first property. So it could be the first house that you property that you ever owned and, um, and they could go after you for a flip. Uh, you know, the condos down near Rideau Mall, there's those yeah. two or three towers there. Yeah. I had a couple, uh, two or three clients that came out of there that CRA, um, very young people, first condo that they had ever bought, but they bought it and sold it really fast. And CRA assessed them as, as flips on those condos. And, and they had to fight uh, with CRA about that. Um, so it can happen even if, if your history is very little. But obviously, the more that you do this, the more there's a pattern, right. uh, the, the more likely it is that CRA will think that these flips and then the more likely you do it, the shorter, the, the longer the time length you can own it for. So right. So if, if on your third property in a row, if you're doing it every two years, uh, you know, CRA is going to think that this is a pattern and they'll ass- they can assess you for the, the third one. And then they can go back and assess you for the gains you made on, on the first and second one as well. Is, is there a timeline that they can go back or is it just infinite? You know, that's if they... a, yeah, that's a great question. So CRA um, under, under the law, CRA has three years from basically the date of your notice of assessment. So the date that you file your tax return, they have three years uh, to to assess you. However, if they believe you've lied, Hmm. uh, they can go back infinitely. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this this situation I told you about where the CRA assessed this guy for for five houses, they were definitely going back more than the three years uh, to- to I think I remember reading about that. It was kind of, it was interesting that, that how they went after that guy. I don't know how much I think at the public case. So maybe we'll yeah. get some, you know, share some details on that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's 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 a case called Hanson, hmm. and uh, I I worked on it while I was with a former employer, and then it went through uh, to trial. And and in that case, CRA the gut judge did not let CRA go back more than three years. Okay. So that was a big win for the client because a couple of the years uh, where it's called statute barred when CRA can't goes back, can't go back farther. Right. Um, so yeah, so that was, that was a, a big part of his success, but I mean, he had to, he had to fight that out for many years uh, to succeed on that. Um, Sorry, I derailed you. So coming back to this list. So in, so timeline, the longer, yeah. the better, right. Um, a pattern. Right. Exactly. So the next, the third one is reason for selling. So if, um, so if CRA believe, so if you've got kind of a really justifiable reason for selling, then, then it's far more like far less likely that CRA is going to assess you for a flip. So, you know, you lose your job, you move, uh, sorry, you lose your job or, or, or your, jo- your job changes somewhere. So you're moving kind of long distances. Um, you, you have another kid, so you need another bedroom, like these, these types of things, um, the, you know, the natural progression of like, as I get, as I get older, as I get more stuff, right. more kids, I'm going to get larger and larger houses. Yeah. That, that's going to, that's going to kind of prevent a flip. And so people are re- reassured by that. Oh yeah, I did. I did move a few times when I was younger because it, but it was because I had a kid and I had another kid and then I, I, I started making more money so I could afford a bigger house. Exactly. Where that kind of, where that, that reasoning won't help is if, is if the houses are always kind of the same size, mm, you yeah. know, and you, you're constantly making money and just kind of bouncing around a neighborhood. Right. Um, yeah. So, so, but, uh, so reason for selling is a big one. Um, the uh, one thing I'll say too, about reason for selling is like some people, sometimes people will come to me and they'll, they'll say, Oh, you know, yeah, I, I, I bought a lot with my, uh, with my, you know, cousin, we divided it in two. We, you know, put an infill in. I lived in the infill for a few months. And then, oh, I realized that I couldn't afford it. And it was a bit outside my budget. And so I like moved back into a one bedroom apartment with my buddies and right. sold this like $1.2 million infill. Like mm-hmm. CRA isn't going to see you as going from like, oh, I, I thought I could afford a $1.2 million <laughs> property. You know, I, I sunk all this money into it. And then after six months, I realized that it was a bit outside my budget. Like right. they, they didn't, yeah, they weren't born yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm. Stuff like that isn't, isn't going to really fly. Um, and uh, simple stuff like unpacking and personalizing your house, yeah. you know, so like, 
with house flipper clients, I'll ask them for photos of, of their house unpacked, yeah. you know, pictures hung, like this type of thing. It sounds trivial, um, mm -hmm. but it can actually, it can actually make a difference when you're disputing these things. Gotcha. I, I thought because I have kids, it's like, you know, your daughter as well, you know, are your kids enrolled in school? Mm -hmm. would come to my mind of um, for sure have they have they enrolled in school have you have you personalized their bedroom or does everything look like it's a show basically a show home you know right. what i mean there's i'd a love my house to look like a show home just not possible with kids <laughs> that's right that's right and then the fifth one is um and and this one is big for you chad personally it's big for all your listeners is the occupation of the homeowners oh if you are working in the real estate interest industry or yeah. you're or you're a contractor working in construction and you um and you know uh you know a lot about real estate and you know how to earn profit CRA is going to assume these things of you and uh and they're gonna they're gonna um they're gonna assume that you knew how to make money off it that right. you knew what you were doing and that this was your intention so people who are already working in real estate mm -hmm. um people agents uh, for sure, mortgage brokers, for sure. Uh, the case that we spoke about, uh, Hanson, which again is a public case, uh, he, he, he was, he was working as a, um, he poured cement in driveways. That was his business. Right. And, and the CRA accused him of, of knowing kind of where the hot neighborhoods were and, uh, and, and what would come of that. So it, uh, so yeah, this is all, um, these, this is all th things that make it especially important for people who are in, in, in real estate to, to know about this and know what, know what they're facing. Right. So you just, you had to have a higher degree of care because you're more knowledgeable. Yeah. And it's, 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 yeah, it's degree of care and it's just, um, it's all, it, yeah, it's just, it, you're going to be, you're going to be in the spotlight. You're going to be in the spotlight for sure. And so if, if you're, if you're, if you're buying and selling quick, you got, you got to be really careful. You got to expect that this might happen. Absolutely. So how does the, the intention, right? So I'm moving into a house. I want to, you know, yes, I'm buying it at 400. Let's use your example, 325. And I know it's going to go up in value. I know it's shag carpet and it's, you know, a green toilet. And I'm going to make it look beautiful. I'm going to make it worth 475,000, but I'm, you know, and next year I'm going to sell it because I want to go and buy that 1.1 million dollars. Yeah. Say that as an example. So I'm going to sell it for a profit, but I am living there. I'm legitimately putting my kid in school. I'm, you know, we're unpacking all that stuff. And I, I know there's no great, there's no black and white, right? So there's nothing yeah. here that's, that's, you know, quote unquote disclaimer. There's not tax yeah. advice. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but how does yeah. that, how do you balance that? So I would mean if, if you're walking into, if you're walking into a house, um, knowing that you're going to fix it up and knowing that you're going to sell within a year, I, I think on the day that you sell that money, you better make sure that you don't spend it all because I think you are at risk of, of having to pay, um, part of that in tax. And, uh, and you, you know, you're going to want to talk to your accountant about what that looks like. So you, you definitely have to be careful there. Um, you know, if, if the only way that you can afford that $1.1 million house that you're talking about yeah. is, is by, is by making money off that first house, right. Sound, sounds like an intention to flip to me. Right. So again, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing bad about that, yeah. but you just gotta, you just gotta, when you're doing your business plan, you got to make sure that this, this investment still makes sense if you have to pay uh, tax on, 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 the, on the gain, on the, on the profit. Uh, and, it's, and it's full tax. It's not the capital gains version, like the 50% of it. We're talking, you make 150 grand, you pay tax on 150 grand. Yeah, that's as, right. As your example. At your, at your marginal, at your marginal, marginal rate. tax rate. Wow, yeah. that is huge. The industry yeah. does not know this at all. Yeah. Uh, there's so many people that are completely offside on this because e even the people that are expecting the gains and are doing it as a business, um, many of whom I know, and, and you know, I'm, obviously I'm part of all the real estate groups and we chat and when we could meet, we would have, you know, beers and coffees and drinks and, yeah. and people say, Oh, I'm selling this property. And you know, I, I bought it, blah, blah, blah. I'm flipping it and it's capital gains and I'm paying 50% tax on that. Yeah, no, that's not, yeah, that's not how it works. So the only way you're going to pay capital gains is if you're buying a property and you're using it to earn income by renting it out. Right. So rent, rental properties, once you sell them, are uh, are taxed at fifty percent. So now, uh, 
people are probably thinking, well, can I put somebody in there for the last <laughs> month or something like that? <laughs> Again, it'll, you can get into the same debate and, and CRA will ask, what was your intention at the time of purchase? Was it to rent it out or was it to, to sell it? And, and, and in, in the situation you're talking about there, okay. it sounds like it sounds like a flip to me. Wow. And so coming and I, and I know my listeners are heads. Some of them are exploding right now and there's cars crashing and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I hope nobody's cars crashing. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I know we've seen that one year, right? I mean, you've heard of a thousand times. I've heard of a thousand times because we all don't know what the future holds. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think, OK, yeah, I may sell it. So how do you go from I will to I may? And how do you document that for somebody to protect themselves? Because what yeah. I'm hearing from you yeah. is document, document, document. Yeah, for sure. So I think like the more, so yeah, say it's a bit of, it's not quite as an extreme example as you gave me where the person's going to go in and redo the carpet and the toilet and wants to, you know, already has the eye on the $1 million. Say they're going in. I mean, there's still risk there. There's something called secondary intention where, where the courts can say, oh, even your secondary intent, I, I, I won't get into that. It's in the Hansen decision if, if yeah. anyone wants to geek out and go read it. Um, but I would say like, yeah, if you're, if you're someone who, who's, who's always going to be thinking about it, frankly, I am too, right? When I buy a pro when I bought this house, I was thinking about what it's going to sell for. Right. Um, That's normal, right? That's, you know, every, the real, especially in Ottawa, people love real estate, you know, it's, of course, everything's going up and everybody wants to, of course, get the bigger, next, better house, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And my partner, she's looking at all the, all the houses around the neighborhood talking about <laughs> which one we're apparently going to buy and all this stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So I would say, I would say, um, if, if you're if you're like me say and and and, and you you think about it but you, it's it's not an intention to flip and you also want to set up roots hmm. the more documentation you have from the time of purchase the better for sure okay. so that includes you know your top 10 lists of buying this house versus another one um anything that makes it personal looking into schools etc the email exchanges you have with your real estate agent about why this neighborhood works for you and your family all that type of documentation i mean this is this is for sure. This is really being uh, proactive. But I mean, when you see what I see, like you'll be proactive too. Absolutely. Um, that put it in a file, save it, and uh, and 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 have it there as as backup for sure. Yeah. So what I mean, when what I'm hearing and what I think is really valuable and going out to all the realtors and professionals in the community is that because there's a a bigger microscope on everybody in the industry, um, that they they should do these documentations. And make that file because hey, they're like you said, they're they're being held to a higher standard than just Joe that works at the corner store and might happen to sell a house, you know, because the market's come up two hundred percent or whatever. Yeah, no, I I fully agree with that. Yeah, you're you're totally right. That's a good point. Anyone who's working in real estate should be doing this just as a practice because they might go go into their house actually thinking like, yeah, I'm going to be here five years, seven years, right. For some reason, they decide to to and to sell it after a year or or less or whatever. Hmm. Now, it, usually in those circumstances, there's going to be a reason to sell, and that's going to be your major defense against a house flipping accusation. There'll be some sort of factual scenario in your life that caused you to to sell. For example, there was a, 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 one of my clients. Um, you know, his 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 mother got sick. He ended up moving back, just essentially next to his his mother to take care of her. And the case went so far because I, I, I through the dispute process. And then when I got on the file, I found this out. I told I told the Department of Justice lawyer, and then his case basically went away because now we've got it, we've got a reason. It, yeah. it, it explained everything. Um, so if you have one of those facts, that'll help. But yeah, having one of these backup files for sure is just really good practice. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, we have uh, many investors that wanted to buy rental properties, right? And, and of course, they want to put as least money down as possible. And, uh, and I had one client, it just made me made think of something at CMHC, I've had to advise a lot of my clients, if they've put less than 20% down, um, and they own a couple of properties, CMHC is kind of doing the same thing. They're like, oh, you're trying to buy a rental property without, um, you know, following the rules and putting 20% down. And so at one point, I had to have a lady that the uh, OC Transpo changed the routes for her and her daughter, and they didn't drive, they took buses, and it took their time from like 20 minutes to get to school and to work to like an hour and a half. So yeah. I actually mapped out the bus routes and I actually had to send that into CMHC for them to say, this is the reason why it's now become a rental property and they moved to a proper something else that's on a better bus route. And it seems like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But yeah, we had to document it, right? There that's was good lawyering, Chad, that's good lawyering. 
Yeah, well, mortgage brokering to a great degree, especially now, it, it feels like we're being focused with a CRA on, uh, you know, a court case all the time these days. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's amazing. So I guess it's the other thing I want to touch on was that it's just circle back around was that, and I know you talked about it two or three times, but some listeners still might not get it because sometimes we can be very thick headed. Um, <laughs> that idea of capital versus capital gains and, you know, that rental property being inventory and making money from, from the property. So like one year, two years, like, I know there's no defined time, but like you said, the longer, the better. Is there something like, ah, if I kept the property like three years, it's probably okay. Like for, for, uh, for like for, for a flip, you're talking to, about to make sure that it's not, uh, yeah. Like obviously if the intention is to flip, right. If we're calling it a flip, it's a flip. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that income is taxed hundred percent. Yeah. Um, that's honestly shocking. Um, so right, right there, it's, 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 you know, a lot of accounts are going to be getting phone calls. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but if they're not flipping and that time horizon, so, you know, you're buying that duplex, you improve the rents and, um, yeah. Okay. And you've rented out, yeah, you've rented it out for, for yeah. two years. Is CRA going to come back and say, well, you flipped it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think. To be honest, I think there's a little bit less of a spotlight on that than mm -hmm. on people who are paying no tax on it. Got yeah. So I do think that like if you're if you're in, you've got a rental property for a couple of years, you're reporting the income, yeah. you're paying tax on that, then you decide to uh, sell the property and buy a different, a, a bigger uh, rental prop rental yeah. property, for example. Okay. Um, you're going to pay tax on fifty percent, right? Because yeah you've been using it as capital um, to earn income. I, those aren't the cases that I see as much of. Uh, so, so hopefully that assures some of your listeners. Um, for because sure. At the end of the day, every, every real estate investor wants to improve their asset, you know, increase rents, make more money and eventually sell it to make more money. Yeah. Right. That's the, the long-term goal of every real estate investor. Yeah. 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 And again, nothing wrong with that. And, yeah. and again, nothing wrong with flipping properties. No. Yeah. So, so long as you know that if you're, if you're treating it like inventory, right, you're, you're buying it to sell, then you're going to be taxed on, on the, all, all the profit. Um, so I would say, yeah. So, so with rental property, like you're not going to fool CRA by buying it, you know, yeah. rent, having someone else live in it for two months and then right. flipping it and, and trying to pay 50% less tax. Um, but like, but yeah, I think, I, I think it is safe to say a little bit less of a spotlight there. Okay. That's really good to hear. Um, and I'm going to throw another curveball at you, which we didn't talk about before. So you we might not have knowledge on it or maybe not. I, I heard an accountant, um, ask to bring this up before. And I don't know if you've seen any CRA investigations on it. Um, are people taking equity out of their homes or out of their properties? I should say not their homes, their properties. So it's a rental property. You know, it was worth 200. It's now worth 500. They take out 200 grand. So it's a common question. Is that taxable income? Um, okay. Yeah. So I, I would say, no, it's not taxable income, but you're no longer, it, say you're, you're taking it out to use it for personal use. Sure. I mean, let's, let's say that. I'm going to go buy yeah. a boat. Because that's a big distinction, right? Right. You say, so you're taking that 200 out for personal use. So you've got a okay. rental property. This is actually how, uh, how I got this house. Started off with a rental property, right? It yeah. goes up in value. Yeah. Pull out the equity to buy this personal residence. I don't have to pay tax on the hundred thousand dollars that I pulled out to pay the, to to buy this house. No, but that rent, that that interest that I'm that I'm usually deducting yeah. on that rental property, I can't. I can no longer deduct the full interest, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. because I've taken essentially, I've now taken a hundred thousand dollar loan. To, to use for personal use for personal use. Right. I'm not allowed to deduct interest on a loan that I'm using for personal Person. use. I am allowed to deduct it if I'm using that loan for to earn income. For income. So okay, getting, that makes sense. Yeah. Would, would you be allowed to it, take right. and I apologize if I'm going too far out of the realm of you know our conversation. I just my mind's kind of going down some yeah. tangents like it does. Yeah. If no. somebody put in a hundred grand as down payment and they bought the house. And they're withdrawing their original equity. Yeah, tax, that's same that's tax-free money. That's tax-free. It's tax-free money. Tax money. Yeah. Can you can you could you deduct that? Would that still be interest um, deductible? 
No, no, because because you can never deduct the interest on your principal residence. I guess right? so. You're right. Yeah, and not your residence. Sorry, the principal you contribute to a property. So yeah, yeah. So if if we're talking about any sort of loan to do with your your principal right. residence, yeah, you take that money out. It's it's tax free for sure. But yeah. when you but yeah, you're you're never deducting the interest on that on that loan. Okay, that's great. Well, you provided some amazing, amazing information. I know that list you were mentioning, we talked about the top five, but there's like 15, I think yeah. you said 20 things. That's right. That's um, right. You know, did you put this up on your website? Is there, how does somebody get this full list? Yeah, we will. We will I'll have it up on the website. If you go to blatchfordtaxlaw.com, and that's B L A C H F O R D taxlaw.com. There's plenty of resources there. You can also reach out to me. Um, I want to say one thing because I, 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 uh, I want to be clear on this one yeah. thing. Um, over, just over the past years, CR, CRA is making a lot of money off, off real estate, right? And right. then know that these, this house flipping is happening. So you may, you may know this, but just I think it was in 2016, CRA required that people report um, on their tax return when they've, when they've sold their principal residence. Right, yeah. Right. So that's new. That's because of what we're talking about, right? That's because people trying to flip their property and CRA didn't know, didn't even know these, these sales were happening. Right. So now we have to report them. You also heard me say earlier, you've got the CRA usually has three years yeah. to assess you. Now, if you don't report that principal residence sale on your tax return, CRA can, can keep going back on it. So it'll, wow. it'll never go statute bar. So right. your accountant now, when you're when you're filing your taxes, your accountant, my accountant asks me every year, have you sold your principal residence? Yeah. And I have to say yes or no. If I were to say no, but I had, and it turned out to be a flip, then you know, five years later, six years later, CRA could still come back and assess me for that. Wow. That's crazy. And and like you said before, was you know, CRA, especially now with the pandemic and everything else and the budget that's going on, they need to pay for this stuff, right? Um, so CRA is going to take a big look at the real estate world. And I've heard other lawyers and other, you know, accountants say, yeah, CRA is looking at the real estate industry as a whole, with a lot of, you know, magnifying glasses and, you know, <laughs> chomping at the bit to come after some of this. Totally. They, they pu publish their numbers every year. Yeah. And, uh, and it, it, it's on the CRA website. And I checked it uh, this morning. It's, it's 200, just in Ontario, just on real estate tax audits are with, worth $200 million a year to see. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a cash cow. It's a cash yeah. cow. Yeah. I bet. And a lot of people, especially that I know, it's like, I'm trying to get paperwork out of people for mortgages. Their paperwork stinks. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Right. You know, so, it, you know, so again, I'm hearing this from you and I tell all the listeners as well, right? Document, 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 take everything. Um, I've said to a lot of people, when you leave your, you know, and maybe as this is a last note, um, if people are transitioning from a principal residence, so you're living like your old house, right? In your example, you're living in your property. It's now become a rental property and you move out um, into, you know, you keep it as a rental, move into another house. Yeah. Um, and now that value is pegged, right? When you leave. That's right. So That's right. I, my advice has always been, and see if it's been the right advice, was, you know, make sure we get an appraisal, yeah. take that appraisal, third party, save it in a file. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're totally right, right? Because the gain from the point that you move out, the gain from that point onwards, it's going to be now taxable. It's right. going to be taxable as a capital gain. So it'll be taxed on 50% of it. Right. Um, but you don't want to be paying the tax on the on the gain as if as if you were renting out the whole time. So, so the increase in the value, you don't want to pay tax on that, the increase that you that happened while you were living in the property. That's that's very good advice for sure. Absolutely. That's awesome. Um, so for listeners, you, your law practice deals with clients that specifically are already in, um, they've been reassessed and they're looking to defend. That's where you're going after. You're not really doing the tax advice side. Yeah. Now, if somebody, if somebody's listening to this and really want, is like panicking and, uh, and so there's a program called the voluntary disclosure program. So okay. if you did a flip, you know, last year, you didn't, you didn't report it. I mean, you can amend your tax return, but if, if you're in a situation where you feel where you're really worried about a penalty or something like that, you can come to me, we can do a voluntary disclosure so that you don't get hit with that penalty. Right. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I'm, I'm handling people are coming to me when an audit is going badly. And, and the audits that I'm dealing with, like I said, 100,000, 200,000, million, 3 million, these are, these are big ones. And Chad, these, these aren't just for like big wealthy people, right? This right. is 
hitting um, mon pa, you know, businesses like, you know, normal people are getting hit with these types of assessments. Right. Uh, so, so that, yeah, that's my area of specialty. That's amazing. Um, so again, what's the best way for a listener to reach you if you have, um, they have questions, they want to do this voluntary or even just maybe need you to review, right? Like, hey, I, do I have a liability here? Yeah, yeah. Come check out my website. It's www.blatchfordtaxlaw.com. B-L-A-C-H-F-O-R-D taxlaw.com. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for being a guest today. Um, it's honestly really valuable and really enlightening. And I think uh, we'll definitely want to have you back on the show again to maybe dig into some of these cases. And I'm a little bit of a tax geek as well. And, and I'd love to learn about this stuff. So it's, yeah, um, you know, it's, a, it's a real pleasure. It's a real pleasure. Really good talking to you, Chad. Thanks so much for having me. My pleasure. And thank you to our listeners. Um, if you found today's podcast valuable, please subscribe, click the like button or the subscribe button, whichever one it is, depending on the platform you're doing, send it to a friend. It's how our shows grow. Um, and of course, if you need a mortgage or you need help in any way with finances, reach out to us, send a text, call us, um, whatever you need. One of myself, my team members will call you immediately. And you can visit us at um, www.iqlend.ca. Thank you very much. Have an amazing day.